My guest tonight appeared in Knocked Up, Tropic Thunder, Man Seeking Woman, and the blockbuster How to Train Your Dragon movies. Love those films. Now he's directed and stars in the new movie, Random Acts of Violence. Please welcome uh, our good friend, Jay Baruchel. Jay, how are you? I'm well, Conan. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking me. This is, um, we're in very strange uh, situation now for a year. I keep acting like this is a new phenomenon. I can't believe it's been almost a year. I'm so used to talking to you in person. We always have a good time. I don't even know where you are right now. Where are you? I'm in uh, the guest room of uh, someone else. Uh, I was going to say someone else's house, which it is because it's an Airbnb. I'm in Montreal. Uh, is a, yeah, I'm in Montreal. Okay. It's so funny because it looks like you're on the run from the law. It's just, this all has the... <laughs> I tracked down Jay Baruchel, who you all know is on the run. I've tracked him down. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. and the shelling has just started. <laughs> are you doing okay? So you're staying in this Airbnb in Montreal. How are you adapting to all of this? Is this, because I've noticed two things. There are people that uh, just can't handle this quarantine, this lockdown, this pandemic. And there are other people that are sort of oddly suited to it. Where are you? What's most depressing, I think, is that la last year was the by far, by far the most relaxed I've been in my adult life. <laughs> You're, uh, you know, it's funny. It's it is like we're not supposed to admit that, but there are some of us that are getting really good sleep. Um, <laughs> exactly. I've, you know, I don't know about you, but I've spent. I get great sleep, and uh, I've been just basically wearing leisure wear. Um, <laughs> You know, for uh, and it's gotten to the point now where I think I'm putting it in my will that when my time comes, I want to I want to be buried. I want in the casket. I want to be in like Lululemon, you know, I, 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 I just that. yeah, it's a sad state of affairs. No, it certainly is. I'm in a post jeans world. I, I, I can't conceive of ever wearing them if somebody wasn't paying me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this TV show now and now I have to squeeze into the damn things. And yeah, I just I'm like. Yeah, I, I didn't miss that at all. Um, yeah, no. If if I was to if I was to pan down, you would see it's uh, it's it's squarely uh, party on the bottom. That's no, never never saying that sentence again. Um, exactly. Don't ever. And you shouldn't have said it the first time. I'd edit it out. But who has the money for that? Um, I think last time you were on the show in person, you were with your fiance at the time. Yes. yes. Uh, and I know that you were planning to get married really soon. And I think you got married just as this thing locked everybody down, didn't you? Yeah, we 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 really got married. We we got married, and, <laughs> and that was that. And I, I I'll be honest. I when all this started, I really thought we'd kill each other. Um, and <laughs> strangely, that's not what happened. Right. Um, and it ended up being kind of nice. However, there was a point last summer when uh, I. <laughs> My wife answered a question really, kind of short or something. I was like, "Why are you so crabby?" And she was like, "Well, listen, nothing personal, but it's been it's been only you uh, all year." And uh, <laughs> I was like, "I am deeply sympathetic. It's been 38 years for me, so I I I, I, I get you completely." <laughs> now, Jay, you can probably tell that during quarantine, I've worked I work out like crazy. Um, <laughs> There's, they're actually, my assistant is laughing behind this curtain. Um, no, but I am known for my, uh, you know, my physicality and my sensuality. And so I have worked very hard during quarantine at maintaining what the public demands from me. What about you? Or have you, have you worked at it at all? Are you, are you, are you taking care yeah. of yourself? Well, I, I, so you and I, we answer to the same masters. Um, I, I, and so your concerns are my concerns. And so mm -hmm. I, I, look, <laughs> I, I, from here on down, that's the money maker. So I got to, <laughs> I'm in fighting form. When, when you're stuck in quarantine, you gotta, you kind of run out of excuses to give your wife or why you won't do yoga with her. So um, I eventually kind of caved, taken up snowshoeing, taken oh. up snowshoeing recently. Yes. So, uh, um, so that's that that's that's my workout. Did you? Uh, are you a skier? I'm just imagining you. You must be a skier. You had to be growing up. So I've gone skiing once. I went skiing once and snowboarding once. 
uh, and never again each time. Uh, the, the skiing, the one time I went skiing was, um, it, with hindsight, I suspect it was like my father's fumbling attempt to save his marriage took us all on a ski vacation. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert, uh, my mom left him two years later. <laughs> and, uh, and Sorry, so, I'm laughing. I should say sorry, but what are you going to do? <laughs> so, <laughs> the marriage <laughs> broke up and you were so, scarred. And, and I your... was impressionable 14-year-old robbed of my male role model. And uh, uh, but the, So they, they got us all snowsuits, and we went down to Vermont, which, again, exercise and futility because we lived in Montreal. Don't need to go to Vermont to go skiing, but whatever. Anyway, we went, and, and um, everybody made fun of my snowsuit. All the rich American kids laughed at my snowsuit and made jokes about what'd you get that at Walmart? And I was like, yeah, I think I did actually. <laughs> and uh, and then I, I gave up after the like sixth time I ate it. And I was just lying there, like gear all over the place, like a, like a plane crash and my arms akimbo and there's kids going above me on the gondola, literally laughing like Nelson. And uh, <laughs> you know, I used to, I'm from Boston. So my brother and I used to go up skiing in Vermont. So I would have been, it's possible, I would have been up there laughing at you from a gondola. You know, yeah. I, I realize the time doesn't exactly lined up. I would probably start my, my showbiz career by then, but it's possible. It's possible that I saw you as like a 12 or 14 year old and uh, leaned out of a gondola and laughed at you. Cause that's or the kind the of asshole I was. At the very least, your spiritual descendants uh, laughed at me, yeah. <laughs> hey, I want to talk about your movie, which I watched last night, and I really enjoyed Random Acts of Violence. This is a real achievement. You Thanks. wrote this, you directed it, you're in it, and this is really this amazing uh, vision that you've brought to life. Uh, and it is an intense film. It's the kind of movie that... Uh, provokes a lot of strong reactions from people. And you say you've been hearing uh, strong reactions on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's and I kind of set out to do that. I, I wanted to make a movie that, like, you know, for people that kind of connected to it, it would be something special for them. And, and but, it, but anything short of that, I wanted you to to hate it and and question my uh, right to make it <laughs> and uh, and and that and that's what's happened, man. It, it's like I, I don't know about you, but like when I see a movie has got like 40, 50 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, that is infinitely more compelling to me as a viewer than one that's like ninety percent across the board. Right. Because fifty percent means they did something and took some chances and 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 committed. And so, oh man, what's amazing though is that like a lot of the like haters. Um, ended up paying us compliments, like you know, someone calling us uh, lurid and uh, humorless and and cruel and <laughs> garish and unpleasant. And I mean, like, man, those are all adjectives I'd take any day of the damn week for a horror movie, man. Like, it would be awful if everyone's like, ah, oh, it was so lovely and and warm, and and I and I left there feeling better than I showed up there. I was like, oh god, I would. Just kill yeah. myself. Right, right. No one says that about Texas Chainsaw Massacre or any of the classics, you know? <laughs> yes. Took the whole family. All of us forgot our problems for an hour yes. and a half. Yes. Um, no, I don't want the Marley and me, you know, uh, line for my movie. One of the aspects of the movie that I found really compelling is that it's about someone who, uh, I want to use the correct term, it's not really a comic book, the the, the, the main character. You'd yeah. call it more, a gra he's a graphic artist. Um, yeah, a graphic novel, yeah. Graphic novelist. And he's uh, written these com the, these books about, uh, th th that, you know, are really about the horror genre. And yeah. it is a horror movie, but the main theme of it is about whether it's okay to exploit yeah. violence and horror. And it had me, um, like all of us, kind of sometimes getting into the violence, and then at yeah. the same time, you're asking the question that they're asking the protagonist, you're profiting off this, and it's this, I don't know, I thought it was a very, it was sort of a good mind puzzle. Thank you, that, it was It was sort of, you know, my writing partner Jesse and I kind of unpacking our fascinations, if that makes sense, you yep. know. I, 
big horror fan, big true crime fan. And, and I noticed something, which is that I couldn't name any of the kids that, uh, that Michael Myers or Freddie or Jason killed with the exception of maybe like, you know, the main characters. But for the yep. most part, I couldn't name any of the kids they off. And then I also kind of realized that like the same way I could name Dahmer, Gacy, Bundy, the Zodiac, uh, Richard Ramirez, all yeah. these, and I, and I could, and I could list off all their stats, like they were athletes. But again, I couldn't name a single person that they had murdered. Yeah. And, and that didn't quite sit well with me. And so the, the kind of meditation of me trying to unpack some of that stuff is, is kind of what makes up the DNA of random acts of violence. Yes, it's really well done. We have a clip here. This cool. is a clip that is um, that you selected. I actually love this scene because the location is so eerie. But you guys, and I know that you picked this because there's no spoilers in it, but yeah. uh, you, uh, the protagonist is the um, graphic, uh, graphic novelist, and you are his kind of manager, and you guys are on this road trip to go down to Comic-Con, and you've stopped off, and you've gone into this really freaking weird, <laughs> like it's not a 7-Eleven, it's, it's kind of posing as a 7-Eleven, but it's, it's, it's one of those places that maybe even doesn't exist anymore. If it does exist, yeah. it exists way off the main drag. Correct, correct. Yeah, the, the, the world's crappiest gas station. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this clip from Random Acts of Violence. Yeah. Thank you. Odd bird, isn't it? Holy shit. I didn't know a place like this still existed. Uh, what do they even f***ing sell here? Uh, pickled eggs. Yeah, but I mean, I meant, let me rephrase that. What do people actually buy from here in the last... Nothing, apparently. Years? Um, is any of this uh, getting your creative juices flowing, you know? Right, give it a rest. This could be the scene of a massacre. Final yes. issue starting to get into your head now? No. It's my uh, it's, job, man. It's coming, all right? That's the whole point of me designing, you know, the road trip, all right? It's just like tingle, stimulate some inspiration. Final issue inspiration is the objective. Right or, now. conversely, it doesn't have to be the last issue, buddy. It's the last, we've talked about it, man. I'm, f I can't, it's not healthy, you know? Uh, you don't have to wake up in cold sweats. Whatever and it takes. I wish I wanted to eat some of this food so I could make you pay for it. No, none, none, none of this is edible. Um, oh my God. Look at this thing. Janked? The f is this supposed to be? Looks to me like just a sold out rack of slasher, man. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? You know I'm thinking what you're thinking, buddy. It's time for a refill. Right, it is. We got a trunk full of them. Or we could maybe do that the next town over. Is this kind of, it's a little bit ah, much on. for them. No, McBain and McBain. Yeah. Like... Where was that, by the way? That, I think, is uh, slightly outside of a small town called Bethany, Ontario, which is itself maybe a thousand people or something. So, yeah, so, it, so everything was like within an hour and a half, two hours uh, um, outside of Ontario. So, like, right. yeah, the, the, the arse end of some highway off ramp. Yeah. Well, I'm never going there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully me neither. Hopefully me neither. Because <laughs> that really looked like an unpleasant place. <laughs> Random Acts of Violence will be available on video on demand, uh, digital HD and DVD and Blu-ray on February uh, 16th. And I congratulate you. This is a, this is a remarkable uh, effort that you've put in. And uh, I think it's really cool that you pulled this off. Thank you, Conan. That means the world, man. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. All right, yeah, and uh, congrats on everything. And we'll—I uh, hope to talk to you soon in person. All right. I look forward. I look forward to it, my friend.